Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is not your typical Tuesday and I got a set of 40 Neo Color 2 Aquarelle um, uh, crayons when I went shopping at the Mary Artist and we're going to use them today. Now, I don't know how to use these. I will not say that I am perfect at using anything, um, but these are brand new to me, so I'm going to do my best with them. I cannot find my Caran d'Ache um, palette, so I'm going to use uh, this uh, thing here that Bob made me. It's got a good um, texture on it, so I will use the back of it. It is actually a... <laughs> Um, holder for the chow markers but it has a really good texture on the back of it so it will work perfectly I have my um, water pen as well and some paint brushes as well so I've got a number two um, thin line paintbrush, a number three thin line paintbrush, a number six round, and what's this one? Uh, this is also a number six round. And this one here is also a number six round. So I seem to really like the number six round. <laughs> so uh, I will be using one of those number six rounds. It seems I have a lot of them. So that is what I'm going to use today. The pe picture I'm going to color or paint, uh, so to speak, is the uh, one of the pictures that was not chosen uh, for our month colorings. Uh, it is on my list of things to color for the month, but it was not chosen to be colored in the um, Saturday and Wednesday streams. So this is what we will be working on. I have put a black marker uh, sky and I have done her skin tones in the Artex colored pencils. Now I'm not going to tape this down. I'm hoping not to have to, but if I do, I will make sure I have my tape available because yeah that would be smart to know where your tape is <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about tape oh dear and do you think I know where my tape is mm -mm. nope nope I do not oh dear well if I need it I will see if I can find it um, I might have to use a different type of tape because I can't find my painter's tape. But I will tape it down the best I can without my painter's tape. I don't know where my painter's tape is. Which, of course, is silly because I use it all the time. Well, it's like I can't find my Caran d'Ache palette either which I use all the time. I can't find anything today. I am all over the place today, guys, so please don't mind me. But I will try to not use a whole lot of water and uh, see if we can if we can figure out how to use these uh, crayons. All right, so I'm gonna switch you over to the close-up camera here. And we're gonna work on her tail first and I want to do her tail this lovely lovely jade green now I'm gonna see if I can do it this way hold on a sec I'm gonna see if I can do a picture in picture here hmm So I'm not, not coming up with picture in picture. Hold on. Ah, there we go. There we go. So let's move that camera so you're not looking in my lap. All right, so um, we'll 
we'll make this a little bit smaller and move it up. Uh, we'll keep it. Um, yeah, we'll move it up here. So I'm taking the Karen Dash um, crayon and I'm just going to color on the palette. like so. Then we're going to take our water brush and we're going to wet this down. Ooh, pretty. Makes a pretty, pretty, pretty pastel green. Alright, fill up my water brush here. And then we're just going to coat her Trying not to get a whole bunch of water on here, but we all know how water brushes work. Sometimes they just like to spit water out even though you... Now I have not prepped this or anything, which I probably should have done. It's a good test of my... Uh, my new printer too to see if the ink is going to run. <laughs> it probably will, but all right. So I'm just getting a base coat down. And of course, I also, another thing I forgot to grab was my heat gun. So I will quickly grab that as well. So as you can see, it's going down really smooth. We do have a bit of run from my printer. I'm going to put a little bit more of the crayon on here. Because we're almost to the bottom of her dress here. And then I will have to... Uh, go and find my heat gun because that's kind of necessary when you're working with water especially on just printer paper this is just a 67 pound um, cardstock so it's not anything that's going to you know be happy with water and like i said my printer ink is moving a little bit. So I'm trying not to hit it very much with a heavy amount of water. Lesson learned. Today is all about lessons and I know I'm off camera down here but We're going to explore these wonderful Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s together. Now, if I had printed this on watercolor paper, because I do have some watercolor paper that will go through my print printer, um, if I had printed this on watercolor paper, I wouldn't be as concerned. And I would have uh, probably not had to deal with the uh, printer stuff because I can put the watercolor paper through my laser jet instead of my ink jet. All right, so we're almost done with the tail here. I'm just going to put down just a little tiny bit more of this green. It is such a pretty green. Fill the brush. And 
and we'll see what color it turns when it's dry because of course with watercolor things sometimes the activation of them it makes them nice and vibrant uh, but when they dry out again they're a little bit more the same color as the um, as it is on the crayon I'm just going to grab a little bit of paper, paint, water from my paint puck here and just wake up all of that and get it all moving around here. Because it's just a small bit left that I need to do. I don't really want to put any more though I'm seeing that it's not as pigmented. Yeah. I don't want to take it straight off of the crayon. You can take it straight off the crayon if you need to. Um, and the way you do that, of course, is just the same way you do the King Art paint sticks. the King Art gel sticks and you just pick it up straight off the crayon. The thing with that is is it wets the crayon so now I have to let that completely dry before I put it back in my case and close the lid otherwise it's going to maintain that moisture and it doesn't seem to give as much color as if I put it down here on the palette. Alright. And of course this is um, a Molly Harrison for our uh, hashtag Molly May and it's a mermaid so it's also good for the uh, tribute to the um, mermaid hashtag as well and if you are in our Facebook group it's also a perfect picture for our monthly event which is Molly Mermaid where everything that is submitted should be a mermaid done by Molly Harrison. All right, so there we have her tail uh, based. So I'm going to rinse that off and I'm going to just dry it off over here on some paper towel. I'm going to put this color aside and I'm going to grab my heat gun and we will dry that out. look in this drawer here and see if my paint painters tape is in there which it's not of course not I have no idea where anything is right now it's crazy all right so we've got the heat gun here I'm just gonna plug it in because you know that's what we need to do there's our trusty heat gun. Oh, here comes Mr. Choo Choo, just for the fun of it. There we go. Let's try not to knock over our pencils. Okay. So I've got my heat gun here, and I'm just going to dry this back and front. I apologize if that's loud. It's 
So as you can see, I used marker on the top area there. Okay, so, and this is why I need my tape. Hopefully it'll flatten out. All right, now we're going to take a bit of a darker green. Let's see what color is this. Okay, so this is emerald green. And we're going to put in her shadows and stuff. So we're going to go down here. And we're going to put in a good amount of the emerald green. And we're going to take our um, fine line pen. This one here is the number three. Make sure we dab it on our That's better. Dab it on the paper towel to get the heavier bits off. So we're just going to do her shadow areas here. Now most of this is going to be shadowy because of the fact that the moon is behind her. But there's also going to be a reflection off the water. So up here is going to be more of a shadow area than down below. But I'm just going to concentrate on the thinner shadows. Oops. That's of course, I've got a t tip in my paper here because of the water. But is warping a little bit. And I will end up having to go through and dry that or iron that to flatten it back out again. So what I'm doing is I'm just going through and I'm putting in the smaller shadow lines and the lines for the Um, scales with this little thin brush. And for the larger areas, I'll come back through with one of the number six brushes and we'll extend those shadows a little bit. So working with these is pretty close to the same as working with the um, gel sticks. If you're working with the King Art gel sticks wet, these are a little bit, uh, they do dissolve really nicely, but so do the King Arts. Definitely uh, more expensive than the King Arts. And I'm comparing them to the King Arts because it's one of the only um, other medias that I have that's like this that I've used a lot more, that I know a little bit more about. Grab a little tiny bit more water here. I'm also using my paint puck, which uh, is fantastic, by the way. Um, basically, all you do is you fill it with water, and uh, when you rinse your, your brushes, all the uh, paint settles to the bottom of the paint puck where the little nobles are and uh, gives you a longer lasting rinse, rinse water. Now that we've got a reflection that's going to come up off of the water so I'm not going to put a whole bunch of really dark areas on the tail beyond the um, 
spines of the tail, but beyond the bones of the fin, so to speak. And this part here, which normally would be shadowed quite a bit, is going to be shadowed less because of the reflection coming up off the water, because of the light coming up off the water. Our main light source is the moon behind, but because there's a reflective surface here, there's going to be a light source coming up off of it as well, which is going to be the light source on the front of the picture. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does, because like I said, I'm all over the place today. It's been one of those days. So still going through with that um, emerald green over top of that jade green. And I'm just doing the small areas with this number three brush. The larger areas of shadow I will do with the larger number six brush. Just because it's going to take less time and have less brush marks. But these really thin lines are gr this number three and the number three and the number two fine line brushes work great for small areas and thin lines. All right, so now we're going to take, I'll throw that one in there, and then we're going to take a number six, and we're going to wipe it off and pick up the rest of that. Don't want too much water, but we want just enough water to activate everything. And the number six brushes and the round brushes like this will hold a lot of water. They are quite a thirsty brush, so you have to be a little bit more careful with them. Now I'm just going to add a little more water to it. Thin it down a little bit and just gently move it down so that it's lighter down here at the bottom. Of course, that was off screen. Sorry about that, guys. Same with up here. We're going to do a little bit darker up at the top and then thin it down as we get to the bottom, like so. Because we've got the light source coming up off of the water that's down here at the bottom. Just going to bring up a little bit of that darker color. And we're going to make her tail very bright. And fill in a couple of these spaces here. Make sure that we move that ink or paint. It's not really ink, is it? It's paint. Move that paint around so that we don't have any harsh lines. And it's just a nice, smooth transition. And the great thing uh, that I'm finding is that if you have a hard line, you can easily just go over it with some water. And it just breaks it down just a little bit so that you can 
break up that hard line like you would with a blender pencil with a pencil, which is really cool. All right, so there is our tail. Now I'm going to put this one back, rinse off my thin brush here, and we're going to take another color. So I want a really pale yellow, so I think it's this one here. Well, that's lemon yellow, that's usually pretty bright. What's this one? Uh, June Gel B yellow, okay. So I think it's yellow, just straight yellow. So we're going to take yellow, and I want it to be a very, very, very pale color. So I'm also going to take white, and I'm going to go right over top of it, because I want it to be a very, 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 very pale yellow, like a moon glow yellow. And we're going to take our one of our, our larger brushes here. So let's grab this number six here. Oops. And we're going to wet that. And make sure I wet it all the way down to the yellow. and get all that yellow color and the white color mixed together. And then I'm going to come down here and we're going to put that into her tail. So I was able to completely mix two different colors and create a new color. I'm going to need a little bit more water than that though. Let's grab just a touch of water. It's starting to feel a little thick. So. Now of course because this is watercolor you can easily tone down or dampen the color of something with just adding more water to it and making it very thin on the paint. Um, but because this is on a paper that does not like watercolor very much, I'm trying not to put too much water on the page. So adding the white gives me that ability to um, make it thinner, to make it lighter without adding too much water to the page. Okay, now we're also going to use this mixture for the highlight in the water, but we'll do that after we add the water. So just have to remember what colors we, were, we used. I'm also going to put it here on the moon. And it's, oop, we got a bit of green in there, but that's okay. I'm going to rinse that out. Don't want green in it. We want the the yellow, not the green. <laughs> but you know, it's the moon, so it's okay. Now we're just gonna as we get to the center, make it lighter. We're gonna have to grab a little bit more of that. grab 
grabbing a little bit more water here and just going to dampen it down and bring it in to the center of the moon here. So, and we're still working on the moon, just getting that yellow. Now, the reason why I'm using the I want to use the Caran d'Ache um, palette, but instead I'm using this palette. It's because it has a um, the Caran d'Ache palette has a really good texture area, so it does give you the ability to have that that crayon not just slide right across. So it'll grip onto that. crayon a little bit and give you the ability to uh, work with it instead of just having it run right across the page or run right across the palette I should say. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more of the yellow. So as you can probably tell on the palette, uh, the palette itself is holding that yellow in place. And when I wet this, it'll move it down into the crevices. So the water will stay on it a little bit longer and it won't get all mucky. Okay, I'm going to add some water. The Caran d'Ache um, aquarelles, the Neo Colors, are um, blending together but they're also breaking up really nicely. Sometimes with uh, watercolor crayon or anything like that, you will find that uh, it, you may find that it doesn't break down very well. Just adding a little bit more here at the top. And I'm also going to add some here on her skin, on the shoulder and the arm. And when we come through and do her hair, I will add some yellow to it as well for the moonlight. So if you are working with a water medium and you're not sure about it or you've never used it before, you can do this and just jump right on in um, or you can test different papers and see which ones work best for you for the watercolor and that sort of thing. I tend to just jump right on in. I, I learn more with using than I do with watching and with uh, experimenting. I figure if I'm going to experiment, might as well you know just finish something and make it pretty, right? So I tend not to experiment too much with something. I tend to just dive right on in and hope it works out. <laughs> just going to take a little bit of just the yellow here. And we're going to take our wet brush, which isn't as wet as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to take a little bit more water. And break down that yellow. Take up some of this white here too. 
just to get break it down a little bit and then we're going to put it on the edge here I know the moon is not typically yellow in reality but I want it to be a yellow moon I want it nice and bright We're going to take some of that yellow and put it on the rock here as well. Alright, so there's our moon and our tail. So let's work on the water. Alright, let's knock out that color out of the brush. put it there. So the water I want, uh, let's see, I want it to be a very light blue but not extremely light blue, if that makes any difference, any, uh, you know, any sense at all. Um, Prussian blue is too dark. Maybe and the sky blue is a little too light. Okay, so let's try the turquoise blue. And if we need to, we can put some turquoise green in it as well. Alright. We can put that uh, jade green into it. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Alright, let's get some more water. Let's turn this so I can actually get into it. Yeah, I think that's a little too light. I'm going to take this one here and I'm just going to put it right next to it. And we'll add that to it. So as you can see, you can definitely mix colors together to get a new color. And I think I just want a little bit of um, this one, maybe. There we go. That's what I want. Alright, so with the water, and I will be putting in, um, of course, some darker water over top of it for shadows and that sort of thing. But we've got a, an area. Actually, I'm doing that backwards. Oops. the dark area. That's okay. I'll, I'll just add some yellow over top of it and it'll be fine. I'm just going to lighten that up so that we can add the yellow over it so that it's the water underneath. Now the center area here is going to be her shadow because she's in the center of the picture behind in front of the moon she's going to shadow that water in the front like all the way down the center so there are certain areas like this area here this all this here should be um, have yellow attached to it so what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the darkest areas here and then we're going to add a yellow to the lighter areas if that makes sense so we're still going to have the water color but because it is going to reflect that moonlight we're going to have 
a bit of yellow sitting on top of it in certain areas. So I'm just going to add the blue first and then we'll add the yellow onto it. Oh, sorry about that. It seems like somebody just decided to message. Now I'm not drying it with my with my iron because or with my my heat gun because it is causing the paper to warp a little more. So instead I'm using less water. The least amount of water I can possibly use to A knock down and break up that that paint, but B spread it around. So the less water you can use the better but if you need to add more water to it just remember to tape down your page or um, go through and um, prepare your page so if you prep your page you should be okay I'm just going to put some more of this blue down more of this green and a little bit of this blue as well. Then we're going to take those and we're going to mix them all together. If only I can make it look like that on the page. <sighs> Just going to go around her pin here. center area here. I'm going to try to make it a little bit darker in the center. As we move further out to the edges, we'll lighten it up because that's where the light is going to be hitting it more. So we'll get the water finished up and um, that sort of thing. And then I think next Tuesday uh, we will work with some more of the aquarelles on the rocks. And then we will use the jacquard gold and some... Um, some some black um, acrylic paint or gray acrylic paint or even a dark brown some sort of other acrylic paint on the goblets we'll also use the aquarelles on her hair and we'll try to do some flicking So um, below the video, 
uh, if you have watched this whole video. Below the video, put down uh, the color that you would like to see her hair. So if you've watched the video and you've gotten to this point, leave me a comment on what color to do her hair. All right, we're going to add the yellow to the um, water. So we're going to put the yellow and the white oops, right over top of the blue. I'm going to make sure that it's dry first. So I will dry that with my heat gun just because I want to do it quickly here. So let's dry that water. Alright, so now we've dried the water. Let's activate the moonlight. That's really cool. Activate the moonlight. <laughs> yeah, I said it. We're going to activate the moonlight and get it on the water. And then we will be using... First of all, because it's getting, feeling a little thick. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the moonlight in the water. And I want to lift up a little bit down here. Putting a little bit more water on the brush. I don't want it too light over there because this rock air is going to be blocking most of that. So what I'm doing with my finger is I'm just moving that over a little bit, like so. So it gives the moonlight effect. Now I do want to go through and pick up some more of this blue here. So I'm going to rinse that off and I'm going to pick up as much of the blue as I can find. I don't really want to add any more, but I want to pick some of this up. Although I think I might have to add a little bit more of that dark blue. So we're just going to put a little bit of that in. To what's already on my brush. And we're just going to go through and reestablish that dark area from the overhang. So there's going to be a shadow there. As well as a little bit more of the darker area through here. But 
we're going to thin it out a little. Clean that up a little. Then I need a little bit more of this one. Just trying to get the colors on the water right. Because even though the, the moonlight isn't hitting it, there's going to be a little bit of color variation in the water. Because that's just water. what water does. So I'm just going to take a little bit more water and put it on here. And we're just going to add a little bit of the light green areas just into the water here. Because some of these areas is still going to have the shadow from the soil underneath or the rock underneath. Like so. All right, and I think we are just going to soften up that line a little. I think we are good. Go through here just a little bit more with that yellow while well, we still have it on the palette. Of course we can come back and reactivate it later if we need to. Now I've seen Belinda do this a billion times and it actually works really good. And moving that paint and just lifting up what you don't want, the excess. So that's really cool. Never done it before. There we go. He's channeling my inner Belinda. <laughs> All right, so that's as far as we're going to get today. So I'm going to take a, switch you over to the main camera here so that you can see it a little bit closer and a little bit better. So we have done the water, we've done her fin, and we've done the moon. I will be going around the moon with a little bit of a darker uh, tone as well. Um, so that uh, it does stand out a little bit better. But we've got water, we've got mermaid tail done, we've got moon glow, and then next week we will get the rocks and the goblets and her hair done. Uh, the rocks and the goblets won't take a whole lot, but the, um, the underneath here is going to be shaded because of the fact that it's a crevice. There's Basically, it's overhanging that water. So under here is going to be definitely a very gray, very dark area. And we will work on that next week. All right, guys. Thank you all very much for hanging out. I hope this has been educational. Um, the way that you use the Neo Color 2s is very much the same way that you would use the... Um, King Art gel sticks as well as the um, uh, ink tents, that sort of thing. You can do this directly on the page and we will be touching on that a little bit next week. Um, but so far this is a mixed media page of Artex colored pencils, uh, Chroma marker, and a uh, Neo Color 2, Caran Dash Neo Color 2 Aquarelle crayons. 
and again like I said we will be using more of the uh, neo colors because why not and I want to play with them more um, <laughs> so we will be using more of those neo colors um, next week on this picture um, so that we can uh, definitely get a good understanding and a good grasp of how to use them. I might even tape down the picture next week just to just to um, make sure that it doesn't fold up any more than it's already folding up. Just going to take a little bit of this yellow and fix her tail here. I'm just using my water brush so that I don't put too much water down. Like so. Make sure that I have a good show of the moonlight on her tail. And on her hand here as well. And this part of her arm. I have a bit of moonlight on it as well. There we go. And when we do her hair, of course, it will have moonlight on it as well. All right, I will stop. I'll, I'll stop fessing with it. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this Not Your Typical Tuesday working with a medium that is brand new to me. Uh, this is, of course, the Neo Color 2s from Karen Dash. Um, and I think they did pretty good. Um, it has given me a nice, vibrant look on her tail as well as the water so and the moon. So with that, I want to say thank you all very much for watching. Of course, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to any YouTube artist that you enjoy watching. And always, always remember to relax, color, and stay safe. Remember to leave me a comment in the description or in the comment section below the video on what color we should do her hair. All right, guys, until next week. Bye-bye for now. And of course, we'll see you tomorrow for Work in Progress or Wellness Wednesday. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now.